Josh, I understand you've just finished a really important study on muscle growth. Specifically, your study combined all of the existing scientific research on training volume and training frequency for muscle building. As far as training volume goes and hypertrophy, what were your broad findings? You don't need to be at your all-time peak volumes to see muscle growth. Pushing the envelope in terms of workload. Higher changes in volume led to greater gains. But at the same time, you can get very substantial growth and in fact the most efficient and the highest return on investment from a low volume protocol. However, I've become more intrigued by the potential benefits of short-term changes in training volume. Additional sets are probably gonna to lead to additional growth. Oh wow, for volume, that's not what I expected. The objective of this huge meta-analysis of 34 studies by Josh and his colleagues was to examine the relationship between volume, how many sets you do for a given muscle group in a given training week, and hypertrophy. How many sets should you be doing to build muscle? Before we can get to the results, we need to first understand how to best count or conceptualize volume. First, volume is defined as weekly volume. Take all of the sets you do across a given training week for a given muscle and add them up. Another consideration, are all exercises created equal for all muscle groups involved? Let's talk about the dumbbell row. The dumbbell row trains your upper back, your lats, your teres major, your rear delts, your forearms, your biceps, even more of your elbow flexors. Does the dumbbell row target each of these muscles equally well? Should we count one set of dumbbell rows as one set for each of these muscle groups? For many of these muscles, like the forearms, it trains them somewhat indirectly. It doesn't target them quite as well as, say, a dedicated forearm exercise. So instead, we could count it as only one set for one muscle group, the muscle group being targeted best, in this case, the upper back. But that might not be accurate, because you probably do still get some forearm, biceps, lat stimulus out of the dumbbell row. And so instead, we could count it fractionally. The dumbbell row could count as half a set towards the biceps and the forearms, for example. This is called fractional counting. How you count volume might really matter. And one of the main findings of our analysis is that fractional sets had the best predictive power for the amount of hypertrophy that you uh, achieved in, in, in these studies. So kind of one of our, our first takeaways here is that when you're quantifying your own volume, you can count it however you want, but probably the most accurate way to do so based on the research is to count using some sort of fractional system for exercises that indirectly train the muscle that you're trying to grow. Now I hear you saying, why half a set? While fractional counting might be better, it also relies on a number of assumptions that may or may not be correct. Why half a set? Why not 0.7 sets for the biceps from a given set of dumbbell rows? Can we really rely on these imperfect assumptions? My response? If you want to apply the findings from this study to your own training, count fractionally. Counting fractionally is more accurate than only considering direct work or considering all exercises equal for all muscle groups involved. But if you wanted to keep it simple instead, you could count exercises as only one set towards each muscle group involved. When Josh finally gave me the results to his meta-analysis, I was surprised. Yeah, so the main finding from our meta-regression is that as you did additional sets per week, you see additional hypertrophy. We did find that that relationship resembles diminishing returns. So in other words, as you go from zero sets per week to five sets per week, you're going to see the greatest return on investment. As you go from five sets to 10 sets per week, you're still going to see robust hypertrophy, but the net benefit is going to be slightly less than that previous interval. In other words, the additional marginal muscle growth you get from each additional set you do in a given training week decreases. You get diminishing returns. Roughly speaking, when you double your volume, say from 10 sets to 20 sets, you get around 50% more hypertrophy as a general heuristic. And this relationship seems to hold up all the way to 30 or 40 fractional weekly sets. If you're watching this, you probably want to get as much muscle growth as possible. So why wouldn't you just do 40 or more sets per week? So it's often hypothesized that as you do additional sets, you will see additional hypertrophy, but eventually you'll actually see worse hypertrophy. It probably does occur at some point, 
but within practical constraints, that upper end doesn't seem to be clearly defined for most folks. You'll likely grow more muscle if you do more volume. More is more. That doesn't mean there is no limit to recovery and how much volume you can benefit from. But within the studies we've conducted, even up to 30 to 40 sets for a given muscle seems to be recoverable and net you more growth. We see additional hypertrophy from additional sets with some degree of diminishing returns, but not overwhelming diminishing returns. And then also no clear point at which there is the downward slope of the inverted U or worse hypertrophy from additional set volume. One criticism you might have is that these pencil-like researchers didn't actually train participants all that hard. If they were training as hard as I am, there is no way they would benefit from this much volume. Being a researcher myself, I can tell you, we train participants hard. In fact, they probably train harder than most people in the gym. We have several people watching them, and not just watching them typically, also shouting at them, providing verbal encouragement on each set. Additionally, they're being financially incentivized to take the training seriously, push each set as close to failure as they can. So if anything, people in these studies are training harder than you are. One more reasonable criticism of these results is that these studies often use untrained participants, people who are less advanced than you are. In other words, while trained lifters see less muscle growth, they do still benefit from very high volumes. Trained lifters still see more growth with higher volumes than lower volumes. While we don't have studies on Ronnie Coleman, if there were something to more trained lifters need less volume, we would see that play out when comparing studies in untrained to trained lifters. All right, well, couldn't it be novelty? Couldn't it be the fact that high volumes are beneficial for a few weeks or a few months, and then there's no more benefit? Or couldn't it be that the participants in these studies aren't resting for long enough between sets, causing each set to become junk volume? Let's start with a potential claim that uh, higher volumes are only beneficial in shorter study durations. We did not find evidence supporting that claim. In fact, if anything, we saw that longer study durations had a greater slope of the dose-response relationship. Another claim that's often made is that um, higher set volumes are only beneficial if you're doing so-called junk volume and you're doing short rest periods. So you're just kind of stacking sets that are not effective in isolation. You just need to do more and more of them but we did not find evidence of that as well. We saw a similar slope of the dose response relationship at estimates of one minute rest periods and three minute rest periods. And importantly, the same goes for training to failure. You, dear viewer, might say, I train really hard and take every set to failure all the way. Well, it turns out most of these studies on high training volumes also had participants train to failure. And yet, even when they trained to failure, they still saw a benefit of doing more volume. In other words, if you can handle more training volume, you should be doing more training volume for hypertrophy. One of my personal takeaways from this analysis is that the dose response relationship appears to be robust to other training variables. So other variables that are discussed on Milo's channels or other sources of information to improve your hypertrophy on a per set basis. Things like length and partials, uh, being smart with your exercise selection, um, potentially slightly longer rest periods, training closer or all the way to failure, potentially even past failure. All of those things should almost be thought as separate from the dose. The latest scientific results for training volume for building muscle have already been incorporated into MyoAdapt, our own training app that we've been developing for several years now. MyAdapt is soon launching and I'm training with it already. So if you'd like to register interest and be notified when it launches, please head to myodapt.com and sign up to be notified. When it launches, you'll be able to sign up at a lower price than any other time. With all those findings out the way, what does all of this mean for you, dear viewer? Well, Josh and I can agree on a few things. First, you can start seeing some muscle growth with as few as four fractional weekly sets for a given muscle. That could literally be just one full body workout a week. For your back and biceps to reach four sets, all you need to do would be four sets of back training and two direct sets for your biceps. And congratulations, you have four fractional weekly sets for your biceps, which should cause some appreciable muscle growth. Second, you'll start seeing robust hypertrophy with around six to 15 fractional weekly sets per muscle. This could be split up into three full body workouts per week. 
Sticking with back and biceps, you could do four sets of rows on day one with three sets of curls, four sets of back on day two, and four sets of back on day three with three sets of curls. Third, if you want to truly maximize muscle growth, even if it means spending more time in the gym, consider doing 25 or more weekly fractional sets to optimize muscle growth. This could be best reserved for specialization phases, but honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if you could take most, if not all of your muscle groups around this amount of volume and still recover. In fact, I went and counted the volume from my own free program. Go check it out in the description. Assuming you did five sets per exercise, around 25 to 30 sets per workout. In five days of training, most major muscles ended up getting around 20 to 30 fractional sets per week, which based on the results of this meta-analysis should be very close to maximally effective for muscle hypertrophy. Alternatively, just count how many sets you're currently doing. Instead of doing only three sets per exercise, try doing four or five. That can quickly add up. Now you might tell me that you don't have the time to do super high volume or that you can't recover. In those cases, here's what Josh recommends. Right, so if you're, do if you're going from 15 to 25 sets per week on your chest, that might mean that you're dropping your delt training from 15 to five sets per week, just to, to make it a clean example. So as a result, you're going to do additional sets that have a lower return on investment by taking from higher return on investment sets which very well might be a smart choice based on an individual's goals if they really want to focus on chest growth in this case. But just understand the potential trade-offs here. Likewise, it's probably worth picking movements that agree with you. Picking movements that don't tire you out a ton, but are still effective, is a great way to get more volume in. For you though, it may not be about fatigue. If instead you're pressed for time, here are some of the best ways to increase the time efficiency of your workouts and get more training volume in. First, drop sets. A meta-analysis by Coleman and colleagues found similar hypertrophy when doing multiple traditional sets compared to drop sets. However, performing drop sets took about a third of the time of doing traditional sets. We now have three studies comparing antagonistic paired supersets, supersetting two antagonistic motions like a bench press and a row to doing them separately finding similar muscle growth when doing supersets, with the benefit of using supersets cutting down on workout time by about 50%. You can combine these two techniques by using antagonistic paired supersets and performing your last set on any exercise as a drop set to cram in even more volume. And finally, pick the right exercises. Certain exercises are way more time efficient than others. Pick dumbbell exercises. Pick stack-loaded machine exercises. These exercises will require less setup and you can quickly adjust the weight set to set. Now, I won't go too in-depth on these. I have a whole video on the topic you can check out. But since more volume causes more growth, these strategies are something nearly everyone should be using if you have any reasonable time constraints. I already hear you saying, you got that science nerd. I've been doing low volume forever and I've been growing just fine. To that, I say, you might be correct. You're probably seeing growth even with low volumes. Low volumes can be a super time efficient way to train. And to gain a lot of muscle, you can keep things super simple. Just gain some weight, eat sufficient protein, train with reasonably moderate volumes, go close to failure on every set, and you'll be good. And you'll gain a decent amount of muscle without complicating anything. However, you won't maximize progress keeping things this simple. If you want your best growth, you will need to think a bit harder than that. Finally, one question I'm sure I'll get is, what about strength? Here are the takeaways. More volume is better to a point, but after around five to maybe up to 10 sets per week per movement, there's no additional benefit. There are heavily diminishing returns for strength compared to hypertrophy. Importantly, indirect sets like lunges for the squat counted fractionally as half a set. You can start seeing meaningful improvements with just a set or two of strength work a week. Maintaining strength, it only takes as little as one set or two a week. Yep, power building is back. The difference in results between muscle growth and strength makes sense. Muscle growth is simply a local physiological adaptation where strength is multifactorial, involving technique, neuromuscular adaptations, and more. If anyone's interested, I'm happy to make a whole video on the topic. Let me know. Cool. Awesome. Josh, 
you wrote down the results very well. Where can people find your channel or find you online, find your research? Since you're already on YouTube, probably check out our YouTube channel, Data Driven Strength. You can find me on Instagram, josh.datadrivenstrength, and you can check out our website, data-drivenstrength.com. If you made it this far into the video, I know this video was a lot to digest, and it has some practical ramifications for your own training. If there's anything you feel like I didn't explain fully or that you don't quite understand yet, please leave a comment below. I'll try my best to respond to some of the comments and give some clarification. If you're looking for fly training clothing that I fully wrap, check out rascalapparel.com. Use code WOMF at checkout for 10% off.